Hey what's up guys, JC here, and today let's replace some bearings. I want to go ahead and say that I already know a lot of guys are going to have a problem with the way I change bearings. If you don't like the way I change bearings, then don't do it, it's that simple. I'm making this video to show you guys how I go about this without using an expensive press, because I feel like once you buy an expensive press, that kind of defeats the purpose of this. The reason we replace bearings is to save money. It keeps us from having to buy a new motor. But once you buy that press, it's no longer cost efficient. I can also say that this is the way I've always changed bearings, and I have never had a problem doing it this way. And nothing gets damaged, there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing it this way. So let's begin. If you look on the bottom side, there's going to be either a C-clip or a screw. We need to take this off to get the bell off the motor. The C-clip motors are usually like the older style motors where most motors nowadays are coming with this uh, screw. These are so simple. You just unscrew that and it comes right off. These are a major pain in the butt. And for that reason, I'm going to show you guys how to do it on this style motor. I took a flathead screwdriver and I modified it with a Dremel tool. I shaved it thinner on both sides and then I cut a hole right in the middle. And if you look at the C-clip, I can place the screwdriver on both sides of the C-clip. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but if I press on it, then the C-clip will pop right out. And there we go, it only took a few seconds. Put this somewhere where you won't lose it, or you can replace it with a new one, it's up to you. Let's grab this and pull the bell right off. While you have this apart, you want to go ahead and inspect all of your magnets, especially on the bell, because during crashes, sometimes they will come loose. So if any look uneven from the rest, it's probably loose, just press on it, and if it moves at all, then you're going to have to re-secure that. Uh, I would not just glue it on because then it's going to be sticking out a little bit further than it should and it could possibly come in contact with these magnets. I'm not going to go into that in this video, I might do a separate video. Or you can just google it on how to uh, stick them back on. Okay, now we need to actually remove the bearings without a press. If you look on the inside, and I know it's really hard for you guys to see, but the the bearings aren't actually touching one another. There's a space in between them. They're going to be spaced out about this much. And there's actually a piece of metal in between them. And this keeps you from, when you reinstall them, keeps you from, you know, pushing them in all the way until they're, like, contacting each other. So just be aware of that piece of metal in between. How I do this is I just take an Allen wrench that I don't really care about. I don't care if the end gets messed up or anything. It's just a junk Allen wrench. Or, the even better choice would be a punch. I would be using a punch, but this one's too big, and I don't have the right size right now. Well, I do, but I don't feel like walking to the garage. The first bearing you remove, and you can do this from either side, you want to get the right size Allen wrench to where it's small enough to go through the middle hole, but not so big that you can tilt it at too much of an angle. Because if you can put it at too much of an angle, then once you start hitting the first bearing through, it can contact the side of your motor and scratch it up. And you don't want to scratch up the inside of the motor where the outside, the outer race, comes in contact with. So if I put this in one side at an angle and then press down, it's going to stop because it's actually going past that first bearing and coming in contact with the inner race of this second bearing on this side. I'm going to put this in the palm of my hand uh, this is going to act like kind of like a shock absorber. Put this on just like that. Hold it with a couple fingers on the same hand. And then take a hammer and tap that bearing out. And you want to give it a few taps on one side. And then rotate this around about 180 degrees. Or you could do it, uh, you know, like a third turn or something. And then tap again. And then rotate. Tap again. And keep doing that until it comes out. You don't want to keep tapping on one side because the bearing could become like cocked and that will scratch up the inner wall of the mo uh, motor. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm doing. So I tapped it and then I rotated it. I'm going to tap it again. Rotate. And there's the motor or the motor bearing. Now, like I said, there is a piece of metal in between the two bearings, and you want to make sure that this is not against that piece of metal. 
you're actually putting this against the last or second bearing. I know it's hard for you to see, but if you just do this and look on the inside of the motor, you'll know what I'm talking about. And there's the second bearing. I used to punch on the second one, and that's why I was saying I like punches better. They're just faster. I just took a paper towel and twisted it up, pushed it in, and kind of cleaned out the inside, and this is what we get. And as you can see, there are zero scratches on the inside wall of the motor. So for any naysayers, before you even think about commenting saying this is a horrible way of doing it, you might want to think again. So now let's take some measurements to figure out which bearings we need to order and purchase to replace these old ones with. For the first measurement, I'm going to measure the shaft on the inside of the bell. This will be the same diameter as the inner race. So we will take our digital caliper and measure that shaft. We're getting three millimeters. For the second measurement, I will measure the outside of the bearing. This time we're getting eight millimeters. And now I want to measure the height of the bearing. And that will be four millimeters. Do not use these measurements. Your bearings are probably different. I'm just showing you how to do it. So we got three millimeters, eight millimeters, and four millimeters. And voila, do a Google search and you will find the bearings that you need. Brand spanking new bearings. Now we need to get these in without damaging them. To do this, um, here's the hardware that I use. I just went to my local hardware store. I have a bunch of different lengths of these bolts because I have a bunch of different size motors. So you'll have to pick one that works and I'll hopefully you'll get an idea of how to pick the right length. I'll try to explain it the best I can. I also have a couple of these really small M3 washers and a few of these washers. I don't know if these are M4 or M5, I couldn't tell you. So these bearings are going to go in just like this. One on this side, one on the other side, and they have to be pressed in. You don't want to hit on this because you can damage the bearing. And we also don't want to press anything against this bearing because if it's going to press anywhere on this middle part or the inner race, then it can actually warp like inward and that will also damage it. So here's what's going to happen. I am going to start off with this bolt. Hopefully it's the right size. I'm going to put the really small washer on first because that's what will, uh, the head will catch it and then put a larger washer on it and that smaller washer will help fill the gap to push against the larger washer. I will then take one of my old bearings and the reason for this is because like I said we only want to be pressing on this outside race. What is the same exact size as this outside race that we can use to press against it? An old bearing. Place a new bearing on and hold that just like that. Then I will place the new bearing on take another old bearing, the larger washer, the shorter washer, or smaller I should say, and a M3 nut, or whatever size your bolt is. It depends on what size motor you're using. And make sure you are using a steel nut, not an aluminum nut, because an aluminum nut will strip and you will have a, a really hard time getting it off. And that's going to give us something like this. So now when we tighten this up, the washers are pressing against the old bearings and those are pressing against the new bearings so they will go in perfectly straight. They cannot cock whatsoever and nothing's going to get scratched. As far as the lengths of the bolts, the one thing I was trying to explain is once you start tightening this up, the nut is going to be coming way down as this gets closer and closer, the nut to the other head of the bolt, and you don't want your nut running out of thread. If it runs out of thread, then it's going to strip. So I should be good with this one. So let's take this and start spinning, tightening it up. When you first start off, you want to tighten it up just a little bit. Make sure that the bearing is actually going in and it's not getting like sideways or cockeyed. That Allen wrench is stripped out, so I'm just going to do it this way. Whenever your bearings start getting close to being all the way in, 
you want to slow down and you want to feel for a little bit of pressure because once you start feeling a little bit of pressure then that means it's all the way in if you keep tightening it past that then you will crush the bearing okay it's almost all the way in now and I'm yep I'm getting that pressure right now so I'm going to stop because once you feel just a little bit more pressure than you have been feeling previously you're done so now let's take the nut back off and take a look at it okay pulling it apart let's see what we got so there's one side looks perfect here's the other side and perfect now just take the bell put it back on take your c-clip or bolt whichever one you have put it back on these c-clips I just kinda line them up just like that and then take a flathead screwdriver just like that and that's how you change bearings using like a dollar in hardware so thanks for watching and I will see you again soon